right, Steve. I'm going to just start by saying that um, my estranged husband is in jail. Um, he's been in jail for over a year uh, since about the right after the 4th of July of 2022. And recently, some uh, phone calls from last year between he and I were leaked. And uh, on those calls, you hear me saying um, you were winded going up the stairs at your home. And um, Marjorie looks at us as the help. And right here and now, um, I want to apologize to you and Marjorie for what I said. Yeah, that was hard to listen to, wasn't it, y'all? And if you're like me, and of course you listen to the entire <clears throat> Strawberry Letter that Shirley and Steve did together this past Monday, September 11th, <clears throat> you know that there was a whole lot more to that. And it was very difficult for both of them. You could tell that they weren't putting on an act. It was difficult. So welcome back. My View, My Opinion, the MVMO podcast. I'm your host, of course. Thank y'all for joining me for a brand new episode. Listen, this is audio only, right? As you can tell. So what I want to remind you of is that you can literally minimize me. You can minimize the screen and continue scrolling on your device while you've got me going in the background. Or if you're at home or in your condo or apartment or driving, you can just place your device down and just multitask and have me going in the background, okay? Now let's jump to it. You know, I do want to say for all of our new listeners is that this particular broadcast is really not intended to bring anyone up to speed on what all has occurred between Shirley Strawberry and her estranged husband, Ernesto Williams, or Shirley and her boss, Steve Harvey. And there is a lot that has happened over the past many, many weeks. So if you're listening and you literally don't know anything or you are like behind on the uh, events, there is a wonderful YouTube channel called Chronicle Speaks. Chronicle Speaks. Go to her YouTube channel. She has actually kept up with every detail of this story. And that's where you can get all the background, okay? Today, we're just going to talk, okay? And I, I look forward to reading your comments. You know, I will say this. I've been watching, of course, like you and, and listening to a lot of the commentary regarding Shirley Strawberry. And of course, I don't know her. And so I am not going to presume to know what was in her head. But just from observation, I'm going to say this. So many people are saying that Shirley Strawberry was fooled, that Ernesto fooled her, you know, that she just isn't that street smart and that he's this con artist dude who came into her life. It doesn't matter how he came, but he came, okay, into her life and he just kind of took advantage of her. And she was either so in love or so lonely or whatever that she just kind of just was easily taken advantage of. That's one narrative that's out there. And of course, there are people who have a different narrative who say, no, she was very much aware. Um, she just didn't care. Well, none of us know what it really was because, again, we don't know her. But today, let me share my personal observations with you. I don't know either, y'all, but these are my observations. Um, several things. <clears throat> you know, when Shirley met Ernesto, she was in her 50s. And she had already really reached the pinnacle in her radio career. She really is at the highest point you can go. You know, there are some careers that have um, ceilings to them, meaning you can only go so far. There are only so many awards that you're going to be able to win in that particular industry. And you just, you know, keep doing what you're doing and you just keep on top of your game. And she was a, an award winning broadcaster. When she met Ernesto, heck, at that time, she was on what was and may still be one of the number one radio shows in America, <laughs> not just in certain parts of the country, in America. And she was partnered up in business with Steve Harvey. Remember, Shirley Strawberry and Steve have worked together on that show for 23 years. That's a long time. So, by the time she met Ernesto, she had her money together. She had, she was living modestly, but, you know, living, okay? And so when you have reached your 50s and you have reached the really the pinnacle of your career, you really don't marry for the reasons that the average woman who hasn't attained financial security or attained a career achievement 
marries. You marry for one of two reasons. You marry because you're really in love or you are really lonely. Those are really the only two options for a woman who makes the decision to marry in her 50s uh, when she is, again, as I described, at those places financially and career-wise. You know, a woman who hasn't reached those pinnacles career-wise and financially may marry for money. So that would be a third reason. You can marry before love, loneliness, financial security. But when you take certain things off the table, there are only a few reasons, two reasons that a woman marries in her 50s, her 60s, and so on. She didn't need a man to give her anything. She has connection too. See, that's the other thing about having the kind of career she has. It's not just your paycheck that's fat that you're taking home. It's all the perks that come with that kind of job. You get free tickets to any and everything. People are inviting you to any and everything. You know, people want you to do forwards to their books. So you're getting manuscripts sent to you. You've got magazines reaching out to you to do spreads. It's it's very lucrative career. Radio, most people who have been in radio or who know someone in radio will tell you, you really aren't going to get rich in radio. You know, it's the perks. Now, Steve is rich, but that's because of all of his other endeavors. Even when you have a syndicated radio program, I mean, you could make a whole lot of money. But like everyone else, you have to keep working if, unless you make some really good lucrative investments. OK, so looking at the uh, looking from the outside in, she was in her 50s. She was secure. She married for one of those two reasons. But I don't think for one moment she was fooled by him. You don't fool a woman in her 50s. You really don't fool a woman in her 40s. Here's what I want to say, y'all. We have to recognize that there are some of us who we're not fooled. We chose to turn our head because either we were really in love with them Oh, we were really lonely. Have you ever been really lonely? I don't mean just like lonely. I mean painfully lonely. Many, many years ago, like over two decades ago, I had a friend. Um, I was in my 20s and she was in her 40s. I've always had friends that were older than me. I guess you could say I'm an old soul. I remember one time we were talking. There was some guy she had met. She was in her 40s, never married, no children, wanted to be married, wanted children. And she said to me something that I didn't understand. She said, I've just been painfully lonely. She said, it's not just loneliness, it's painful. She said, I feel pain. And if you are in sync with all of the recent research studies, like the Pew Research Studies, you know that in this country and around the world, we are suffering of an epidemic of loneliness. So when we say that, He fooled her. I say to you, he didn't. She chose to turn her head because she was really in love or really lonely. And only she knows what that was, which of those two it was. Now, do I think that Shirley knew about the allegations, you know, the animals, allegedly the animals, allegedly the children. Again, if you don't know anything about that, uh, you'll have to go to Chronicle Speaks. That's the one place I'll send you, you know, um, I doubt that. But remember what we talked about for many, many months now? Something that someone told me many, many years ago. They said, there is no perfect person. And I I thought they meant that the way we all mean it when we say there ain't no perfect person. But they were teaching me at that time. And they said, no, there is no perfect person, which means... There is no person who can perfectly hide who they really are. We always see it. We just choose to acknowledge it or not to acknowledge it, a.k.a. turn our heads. Can I give you an example? Because I think sometimes people feel like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Ain't no way she knew he was a con artist and a crook, which he obviously is. Ain't no way she, you know, knew he was cheating on her with the woman next door and the girl in Florida and stayed with him. Yes. Do you not know that there are people, people 
who are just as real as me and you, who are very much aware that their spouse is not faithful, that their spouse is a con artist, and they stay with them because they don't care, because either they are so in love or so lonely. They don't care. Can I give you a great example that all of us know? It's a Bible example. Remember Samson and Delilah? He was a man filled with the Spirit of God. And look at what happened with him. He met this woman, fell in love with her, or some could say lust, it doesn't matter. The whole point was he loved her or liked her a whole lot. (laughs) And guess, look at what happened. Did she fool him or did he turn his head? And he was filled with the Spirit of God. And guess what? I ain't like him and you ain't even and neither is Shirley. And we, we assume God has called us, but we know God called him. We know God's hand was on him. And look at what he decided to do. How many times did she say to him, tell me where your strength lies? And he would make up a story because <laughs> he, why? Because he knew what she was doing. But guess what? He didn't care because the next night he was right back head in her lap to go through it again, to go through it again until finally, you know, his foolishness got the better of him and he told her the truth and he lost the source of his strength. So let's just not assume that because people are in bad situations that they were not very much aware or at least aware to a certain degree because again, there is no perfect person. So there is no such thing as he got over on me. No, it's a such thing as I saw certain things and either I was so in love or I was so lonely. I just chose to turn my head. And that's what I really think about this situation. She's not the first woman. Men men do this too. Men marry women who they know are not good for them. They know that. But either those two, they're so in love or they're so lonely. They feel like I'll be able to manage it. I'll be able to manage it some way, somehow. But we can never manage another adult. We can never control another adult. We can fuss. We can cuss. We can scream. We can yell. We can threaten. But at the end of the day, day, an adult is going to do what he or she wants to do. So if we choose to become involved with someone who we know is not an honest human being, when they get caught up in the hot check scheme and get our name in it, are we really going to be shocked? Of course not. Hurt? Yes. Wish wish it didn't happen? Yes, but not shocked. So as I leave you today, that's what I want you to remember. Because there is no perfect person, there is no person. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they've done. I don't care how good they are at scheming. Because there is no perfect person, there's no person who can perfectly hide who they really are and what they're really doing. It's just not possible. If you believe there's no perfect person, you must believe that there is no person who can get over on you or get over on me. What I really think needs to happen is that all of us, including me, need to work harder at trusting ourselves, trusting the little voices that we get, the little nudges, I should say, that we get, trusting our conscience. Somebody says something didn't quite sound right. Why not trust it? And say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you mean when you said so-and-so? Why do we just ignore it and say, ah, they probably meant. Why not just ask? Why not just ask? Walked in the room, "Mm, something didn't seem right between these two people. Let's say that you don't know your boyfriend or your husband is cheating, but you're having a party and, you know, people are inside, people are outside or whatever on the balcony, on the porch, and you walk in the kitchen and there's a woman in there and he's in there and of course you're friends with her and he's you know and you walk in and you get that feeling wait something went right when I walked in I sensed something will you ignore it would I ignore it or will we just act on it and and just explore that so that's what I wanted to say about this situation my heart goes out to Shirley I feel bad for her I really feel bad for her daughter and the grandchildren But she's not the only person in life that has made a decision out of love, out of loneliness that backfired in sometimes the most worst ways. So hopefully she'll make it through this. Hopefully Steve will make it through whatever he's going through as well. And you know what, guys, I will tell you, let's just watch this, how it all plays out. 
and um, see what we can all learn from it. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Bye, guys. Thank you.